dainty lovely cats. Look at this. Spring! Yay! It started. I get to this time of year and I feel such a sense of relief. I mean, I know in the UK we don't live in a massively cold climate. I can only imagine what it must be like to be under snow for six months of the year. But I really feel like shedding those layers of clothing and being able to go out and feel sunshine on your face for the first time, it's just magical. And I always really love it when I have that first day of the year when we can go for a naked dog walk. Okay, so let me clarify. The dogs are naked. I am fully clothed. It's just we leave their coats behind, okay? In my excitement, I've decided to go off-piste a little bit and paint a watercolour of some cherry blossom. And at the end, there's a little study in marker pen of the flower blossom close-up that might help you to just feel like giving it a go. I flung the studio doors open wide and let the air in and also the little sparrows twittering. So you might be able to hear those in the background. The first job is to tape down that watercolour paper and whip out my watercolour paints and I'm making up a fairly dark colour here with my darkest brown and my darkest blue so that I can paint in that trunk. And I'm using those pencil lines that I put in very lightly just to give me an idea as to what sort of shape I want that trunk to be. I'm using the very tip of my brush in quite a lot of these brush strokes. And whilst it's still wet, I'm going back in with more darker colour, slightly more brown, just to give it a little bit of texture and a little bit of shape. And I want the tree to be sitting on something, I suggest grass. So here's a little bit of green, which is on wet watercolour paper. So it's given that beautiful, slightly ethereal, grassy feel to it. I've just treated myself to a set of new brushes. Uh, these are by a company called Art Studio. And I will freely admit they are not the best quality brushes out there so I'm just giving them a try really. The ones that I prefer are made by Dale Rowney uh, watercolour brushes with that tapered end. Those are the brushes that I prefer to use rather than ones that have got a straight end or the, that um, are blunt. So I'm going to give these a go. You saw me make this trunk earlier and the, the grass beneath it so it's dry now I've got a few little marks where I went uh, where I drew my pencil lines to begin with but I'm not going to rub those out because I'm going to cover those with flowers so the first job is to choose the right colour I'm just going to put some water on some of these pans so the one that I'm going to use most is probably this Rose Madder, I think it's called. No, not Rose Madder, Rose Magenta. Thank you. Thank you, Brain. There it is. But we need to start, first of all, with a lighter colour. I've got here just a, a tube of titanium white. I don't know who made this. I've had it for ages. So I'm just going to spot a little bit onto my palette. And that's just going to make that pink a little bit chalkier. I want it to look a bit paler for my first round. So that brings that saturation level down quite a bit of the that rosy colour. Okay, plenty of water and going to start I'm dabbing dabbing at the surface with the side of my brush a bit more water and what I need to do is try and decide what kind of shape 
I want to create. So I'm bringing the flowers in where the branches meet and out towards the tips. If you've been watching me paint for a while you'll know this isn't my normal method but the thing is I do love painting like this I'm just going to fill in these areas because I want it to look like feel like there's lots and lots of blossoms so normally I would use watercolour with uh, a Tombow Food and a Suki pen for illustrating books or uh, images that might end up in a book some of the fairy tales that you've probably seen me working on I'm, by the way I'm doing lighter and firmer pressure and depending on where we are I'm also pivoting my, my brush So yeah, normally I would use um, an, a, an ink, a brush pen or a nib with water, waterproof ink. But this just shows you a different method of using watercolour because I am such a massive fan of watercolour. Okay, so that's my first layer. And before it dries completely, I'm just going to mix myself up some more of that but I'm not this time going to put any of that white in and now whilst it's still wet so I'm using wet in wet I'm just going to add some of that some of the areas are going to be wetter than others some of them are going to be almost dry now but that's okay because that helps to make the texture And you, you won't see me sweeping. You'll only see me dabbing that colour in. Because where it's wet and wet, it travels to where it wants to go. And that's what we want. And I've said this many times before, but watercolour does have a life of its own. Watercolour paint. And we want to celebrate that, make the most of it. So this is looking good. Don't want to overwork it though. So now I'm going to add a little bit of blue to that rose colour. We'll see how it looks. Let's use this. This is fairly dark. It's not my completely darkest blue, but it's fairly dark. And then we're going to get a lovely purple from that. A little bit more rose see how this is going to be the um, sort of maybe the shadowy areas so more towards the middle of the tree I'm sure you have probably seen in Japan there is a season for these beautiful cherry trees they have a weekend or a few days where many of them come out in blossom together and they look absolutely amazing. Just want to go over some of that trunk a bit more and, and the branches. Just kind of in random places. Yeah, so these these um, cherry trees are really popular in Japan. Okay, so I think I'm happy with the way that the blossoms look. Now I just want to go back in and do a little bit of detail on the trunk. 
I'm going to go back to the colours that I started with. I might swap my brushes, I think. Great news, I found a number one. So, I'm just going to pick up some of that dark colour that I used before. Just make some sort of tree trunk marks just along the side. If I imagine that the sunlight is coming from this side, or light of some description, light source let's call it. So this side is going to be darker. Just being quite careful not to go anywhere near the blossom that might still be wet. My other top tip for using watercolour paint is hold your brush quite far down. It's very tempting to think you need to hold it here. I think it's much better if you can hold it about halfway along the brush there. Because then you can just get, you just get a little bit more creative energy, for want of a better phrase. And that just gives that trunk a little bit of, a little bit more texture. So there is our tree blossom from a cherry tree in April. Here's a quick lesson on drawing the actual flower from the cherry blossom and I've got here some marker paper and my markers have got these super tips and I've also got some Tombows. So here we go. Let's make a petal shape. These They have five petals something like that. I'm just going to colour this in. When you buy Tombow pens you can also get the blending pen which has um, some sort of magic in it. it. helps to blend all the colours and of course you can use it on something that's not Tombow which is great news for us. There we go. So before it dries out too much, I'm going to go in with this colour, which is 723, just from the middle. And then this one is four, uh, 743, beg your pardon, which is even pinker. And then the magic brush, which blends it all. I'm just doing outward strokes. And you get left with a little bit on the end, so on your kitchen paper, you can just wipe that off and then blend the rest of it. That's one colour. Just to smooth those lines out a little bit. I'm going to take that darker pink again and just go back touch up some little bits in the middle. And then you might not have known this, but on a on a Tombow brush pen you have that the brush bit that end 
and on the other end you've got a thinner nib so with thin nib I'm gonna just do some stamen like that and then I've got a, a yellow papermate flare for the little bits of pollen Well, there you go, a little bit of mood altering loveliness. You might be like me and feel like when you create something artistic, it really does make you feel bloomin' great. Next week, I'll be looking at what I find to be the hardest thing or things about self-publishing children's books. Until then, I'm off to look at a bumblebee's bum. I'll see you next week. Nano, nano.